Good afternoon, Money.net Live. I've got him, Pete Thomas. How are you, Pete? Hey, hey, we're all good. Uh, today is uh, a real important uh, uh, issue because we're looking at gold consolidation globally, Steve. Yeah, you're our director of metals here at Money.net. And, you know, one of the things that I always ask, and I have to, I have to go, you know, a lot of us don't get to hang out in the gold world like you do. Tell us right. what's really going on in the gold world right now. Well, I, I'm... One of my favorite uh, Seinfeld episodes, which is Shrinkage, Steve, Shrinkage. And, and the, uh, the gold market is drying up. We're seeing big players, not little players, mm. and buying everything they can get their hands on. For example, uh, to answer your question directly, Newmont Corp is trying to acquire Newcrest to the tune of $29 billion. It's not like small players are stepping in here. Uh, also, uh, we're seeing uh, Resources Limited trying to buy up. On top of that, Barrick Gold uh, made a move, and they just threw $16 billion at Rangold. So we're seeing huge numbers flying around of people buying mines, and, and they're making the mines smaller. So that's a question that I have to ask then. So you're looking at big companies in, the, in this space trying right. to buy smaller miners uh, right that's, that's pretty small. much 16 takes them... 17 billion dollars is not small to me you know right. yeah and that's taking out uh, the middleman is that correct is that what they're trying that to do is here exactly what they're doing they're they're buying directly from they're buying the mine and they're and they're and they have already in place all the refining uh procedures in place so they're just buying the mines up yeah. Okay. So to me, it feels like it's not just the miners slash big boys. It also feels like to me that there is some uh, some world banks coming in here too, some central bankers that are also buying gold. Is that correct? Well, you know what? That's very interesting. Uh, it, it it's both. It's okay. both. We're seeing a consolidation of the of the miners being bought up, and then we're seeing central banks. For example. Um, for our, the, the, one of my best sources is the World Gold Council. They're they're terrific. And this year, first quarter estimates were up thirty four percent. Absolutely blew the doors off of everything before. Two hundred and twenty eight tons of gold came off the market. I mean, that's a lot of product. And I mean, I could get you a ton of gold very very quickly, but. These numbers are staggering, and it looks like Singapore is number one. Something that came in and bought 69 tons on the open market, followed by China that bought 58 tons. Turkey's buying with both hands. It's really, really active. Yeah, and I posted the World uh, Gold Council a link in the chat for everybody that sees that. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Man, thank you for that. Uh, uh, but okay, so you've got Singapore. You just said right. Mm -hmm. You just said uh, China. China. So Russia is Russia still buying gold? Oh no no no! Remember now, Russia is one of the leading miners in the world. Uh, Russia brings to market about twenty billion dollars in gold every year. Okay, which this is very very interesting. Think about this: Steve. the G seven and the EU are taking gold. They they Russian gold is verbose. I mean, you cannot bring it into delivery. So what has to happen? They went to their secondary markets. Now, when you go to a smaller player, let's say a guy who's moving five, six tons a year, all of a sudden he's got 10, 20, 30 tons of gold. You know, it slows everything up. We're seeing deliveries way, way behind. And so what's happening is uh, we're seeing Hong Kong, Turkey, and the UAE now secondary smaller gold markets are now being forced to become bigger players because the big players are no longer in the market mm -hmm. and let's just say for example ukraine does uh settle down the united states does come back with russia yep. uh, we, we we this is a long way away i'm pretty sure at this point but it's hard to say russia would they dump all this gold onto the market then at that point I, they couldn't dump it because they know because Let's put it to you this way. Putin's probably the best metals trader in the world. And he knows that if he came and dumped that amount of gold on the market, he'd kill the price. And they, he's the one of the holders of metals there. Mm -hmm. So 
it, it, it would also be delivery and demand. You have to meet both. So, no, if the war in Ukraine hits it, we'll, pro- we'll lose a couple hundred bucks right away. After that, I think we're going to see stability again. I, it just looks to me like, I mean, let's look at some numbers here, Steve. I think they're very, very interesting. And, and I think it's a, at this point we should interject them. There used to be 20,000 regional banks in America. Hmm. There's now 4,500. Right. They're talking about that number projection over eight years of moving down to 800. There are a whole lot of people looking at the 722 banks, which have 50% unrealized losses on their books. Hmm. Uh, People are saying, you know what? I don't think I want stock. I don't think I want paper. I want some gold. And because of those numbers, Steve, we're, we're seeing demand just continue to increase. So what's going to happen to answer your question in two different ways is that if the war ends and we still see the pressure on this banking community, I don't think breaks in gold are going to be anything but buying opportunities. Mm -hmm. And is that just gold? Is it including silver, platinum, all the other? Well, you know, let's look at that. I think I think platinum. I just talked with uh, Dr. Davis in South Africa a couple of days ago. Uh, he is the head of uh, Impala, and he, he told me that they're drying up. They're, he says, we're looking for a lot less product coming out due to electrical shortages. And he says, we can't run the mines without electricity. And uh, so uh, platinum, palladium, uh, gold, and silver. Silver uh, definitely was down 2% on the uh, LME. They, so we're seeing stuff coming out of the vault in a very big number. And uh, so to answer your question, it's yes. Uh, all of them are getting well, bought. If, if this if silver is coming out of the vaults, where is it going to? Or is it retail? Is it the world uh, buying it up now? Good good question. Well, first off, we, we, we're we not making less phones. We're not making less electric cars. Right. What's happening is the demand on material usage. Remember, silver is a bifurcated product. It's a precious metals value, but it also has a it as a great conductor of electricity. So we're seeing it get consumed on in uh, first time and, and very, very, very high levels. So it's going to hold its value. All right. I got one more question for you. Um, Pardon me, buddy. Is is a let me just ask this question this way. Because okay. the main reason people are buying metal, are they just nervous about the world? Is it? Just, are they just scared? Are they just trying to find a hedge? What is it that's really driving the whole metal market right now? I, I think I think you hit it on the head. I think there's there's a lot of antsy people. There's a lot of people like, uh, oh, I'm getting from stock houses, I'm getting guys going, hey, I just sold a thousand shares of gold, whatever the price was. And, and you know, going to put 20% or 10% into gold. Just, just mm-hmm. show me how to do it. And and I, I'm getting a lot of calls like that and and surprisingly not in small numbers. So you hit it. I think you hit it right on the head. There's a whole lot of people going, hey, you know, my the bank I banked at disappeared, uh, you know, I, and I uh, fortunately right. got my money back, but I don't want to go through that again. I, I, I want to have some hard metal, you know. Put that metal in your hands, as I always say. Okay. Oh, yeah. You know, give me a call. We'll deliver it to your door. I mean, it's just that simple. And uh, you put it where you want to put it. And, uh, you know, that's just how it is. All right, Peter Thomas, uh, Mr. Metals, Director of Metals here at Money.net. We'll see you right back here next week, Pete. I hope so.